Hey guys, I wanted to make a video on how to design a project to carve on a round. Um, I do a lot of these split monograms and cribbage boards on the smaller rounds um, that I buy from the box stores. So uh, it's a little hard to wrap your head around how to X, Y, zero on a round. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that and um, touch on how the design process goes. So I'm going to start from scratch here and create um, a split monogram um, and I like to start with my workspace at 18 by 18 inches um, most of the rounds I use they're labeled at 18 inches but they tend to be the workspace before the bevel begins is anywhere from 17 to 17 and a half inches so you'll want to measure that and um, create a circle that size Oops, there we go um, so this what I'm creating here is going to kind of act as a template for our design and you want to um, cut outside shape path. So now I know everything with inside of the circle is available for me to design um, anything in, inside of that. So with the circle highlighted, you want to center that to the material and that's very important and I'll kind of touch on that as we go here why you want to do that. So I'm just going to quickly pull in a, um, a split monogram here. Change that depth a little. Okay, so I'm going to center that to the material as well, which in turn is centering it to the circle just, um, because that's already centered. And let's just add a, a last name here. And there's a couple different tricks that you can do uh, to center the name or, you know, depending on what project you're designing um, to center things. This is working well because the font is centered within the square. Um, so you'll notice some fonts or some shapes that you highlight are not going to be centered within the square. Um, you can see that there, and even more so with this one. So I'm gonna show you, as long as um, your font is centered within the square, there's kind of a, an easy, quick way on how to center it. Um, if you don't know what this symbol here, what this box does, I'll explain that quick. Um, right now, with the lower left circle highlighted, it's showing me the X and the Y location for the lower left corner of whatever symbol or, or font, in this case, that I have highlighted. Um, so if we choose the upper right circle, it's going to change those X and Y, and that's telling us the corner of this item you have highlighted is at this location X and this location Y. When I'm centering things, I like to have the center circle highlighted um, because we know half of 18 is 9. So if I can, you know, kind of center it on my y-axis between these lines here, um, then I can go over here and easily just type in 9, and it's going to center it that way. Um, so that's nice as long as the font is centered within the box. So watch for that. All right. And then maybe we'll just add a little bit more text here. All right. And then again, we can just kind of eyeball that about where we want it and then go over here and center it that way. Okay, so on your workpiece, you need to find the center of your circle, and there's many ways you can do that. Um, make sure it's fairly accurate. I've made a template um, to, to assist me in doing that quicker than making three lines on a circle and then drawing a 90 degree and where all they cross and etc. cetera. Um, but determine the center of your work piece and draw uh, uh, make a dot there so you know where that is. Um, at this point in the design here, I would duplicate, so I keep my original copy just in case I screw something up. Um, I can go back and know that that's still available to kind of tweak. 
um, select all. I prefer that rather than highlighting because I know everything's going to be selected. And then it will also kind of show me if I had something off randomly in my workspace over here um, that I forgot I put over there and I don't want to carve anything extra. So it's kind of just a way to double check things. Um, so at this point, I would um, pick my carve, my cut depth. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty deep just for the sake of the video so, so you can see a little bit better. Um, now I'm going to highlight, make sure my center circle is highlighted. And I'm going to zero my X and Y. I don't know. That's, yep, there we go. Okay, so now we know that the Johnson symbol is centered within the circle, my workpiece, and that the, the um, X, Y, zero is in the center of my design. The reason why I keep the circle there is because, let me just duplicate this here. If I remove the circle, and um, zero everything here, it, it does certainly move it to the zero, zero, but look at how it's in a much different location. So you wanna make sure you keep that circle on when you zero it out. I learned from experience. <laughs> okay, so now when you're at this point, you can um, delete the circle because we don't want that circle to be carved. That was just our template for our design. Um, so now I will duplicate this a couple times. I always like to keep a original untouched. Um, so, you know, here a lot of times I do kind of like some fancier fonts um, with a thinner lines and then, you know, much more detail. So I'm just going to quick touch on why I make the um, multiple pages down here. We will de delete anything we don't want carved with the bits I'm going to choose for this page. So I would probably do probably an eighth or a quarter inch. Um, I, you know, spend some time kind of playing around with that. And I don't know, maybe a 60 degree. I definitely spend time um, looking at the simulation. Um, when you're, when you look over here at the, the cut, um, you're not going to see the rest of the design, um, but the machine will still cut the whole design. So don't let that deter you from um, putting your your design at Z zero at X zero or um, X, Y zero. Sorry. All right. So then on this page, we will take that out and leave that and then probably um, just do like a, oops, I get rid of that one first. Probably just do a 60 degree on there or even a 20 maybe just to get the finer detail with the smaller writing. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't necessarily need a 20 degree on all of this. That's why I broke it up into two different pages down here. So now at this point, I would put my work piece down and um, wherever you normally would on your machine and jog your bit over to the dot that you made in the center of your circle. Um, so you're gonna bypass the X, Y zeroing if you have a probe um, and just do the Z zero with your probe or your paper method, however you prefer. Um, so when you push the carve button, your bit is gonna be right here. It's going to be in the center of your workspace, the circle, and it's going to start carving um, the whole design on your circle, even though it's not showing up in the detail preview. It will still carve everything. Um, so once you do that, you switch your bits, whatever bits you determine you need on your first page there, highlight on the next page and switch your bit out and carve again, finishing up your design. Um, I think I've touched on everything. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer. Um, but hopefully this kind of gave you an idea of how to design and 
how to x, y, zero in the center. Um, and this will work for many different designs. I tend to um, design this way and carve from the center on different pieces um, for whatever reason. So let me know if you have any questions. Happy carving!